Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being here on our media day. We're excited to have you guys all with us. Um, any questions? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, late Thursday night, uh, I had a fall in my home. It's been reported in the shower. That's, that's accurate. Yeah, it's been right. Are you are you an investigator? No, yeah. a reporter. <laughs> investigative reporter. Um, usually, how certain falls happen, you slip, and uh, I slipped and tried to catch my hand. Uh, it wasn't like a banana slip. Um, I actually almost caught myself. Um, landed on my knuckle uh, in the window sill of my home. So it's, it's, it's bad how it happened. They're telling me uh, 10 weeks. Some doctors say um, eight. But since Dr. McCann claims to be the best surgeon, he think I'll be back pretty quickly. Rajan, does it matter if it's your non-shooting hand that you might be able to make it back sooner? Is that an impact? I think it factors. I think it's, since it's not my dominant hand, I'll, I'll be back um, a lot faster than uh, I guess they're saying. We'll be very cautious with him. He'll want to be back sooner than he'll probably be playing back. But, you know, people, don't, I think, underestimate how much you use your left hand, not just dribbling and passing, and he uses it a lot, but defensively, you know, and, and uh, you know, we want to be careful and make sure there's nothing long-term there. For this injury, then. Well... I just I do spend time with my kids. Um, the, my daughter's birthday was last week, last Wednesday, and I think the the video that got out was of me at a trampoline park on Tuesday. Uh, I went Tuesday. I took my daughter for a birthday that week to a trampoline park Tuesday, and uh, I think it's in Sky Zone and in, in Deedham. I think um, I did jump. Uh, I learned some new tricks with my daughter. We had a lot of fun. Wednesday was a birthday. I went to the Lion King with my daughter. Spent the day uh, playing baseball with the team. We had a softball game, which we won. I thought I scored about three runs. Um, didn't bat like I was supposed to. We didn't play on a softball field. I couldn't hit it out of the park. Made a couple top ten catches and uh, some a one hand grab throw out at first base. That was was really good. I was impressed myself with that. Thursday came, I, I took my kids back to a trampoline park in, um, in Bell Rigger. Um, I, didn't, I didn't jump that day. Um, I just let my kids play, run off some steam. You know, it was a school night, so I wanted to go for about 45 minutes. Uh, people were really nice there. They let me in for free, so that was good. And that night, I went home, and that's when the incident happened. So it didn't, didn't happen at all at the trampoline place. For this injury to happen when it did, give... Um, I was telling myself it wasn't, you know, what I thought it was. Um, but I tried to grab some things at night. I waited for about 30 minutes to, to make a call to Ed. And I called Ed, and uh, he told me I can come in or I can talk to Dr. McKeon at 7 in the morning. So I went in to New England Baptist at 7 a.m. He got an x-ray. He knew right away that, you know, I needed surgery right away, and I did. I had surgery around 11 a.m. that day. Well, the frustration was that day, but the last couple of days I've been fine. I've been, you know, pretty positive. I think for me to go through what I went through with my ACL, you know, this is this is nothing. So uh, I'm still able to keep my cardio up. I won't be able to, you know, sweat for about a week. But other than that, uh, I've been in the base shape in my life. Uh, the day before, I was at the hospital taking my EKG test, my stress echo test. Uh, I did pretty well. Uh, I think I did the best I ever did as far as conditioning wise on, on my heart test. So. I'm looking forward. I'm still looking forward to the season. You know, I have high hopes. Uh, I have a chance to sit and watch and learn the new system that Brad is putting in and, and be able to learn from a, from a sideline standpoint versus on court right away. Just how much of a setback do you think will be missing training camp for the second year? I don't think it will be a setback. 
you know, I think my time will be off a little bit, but it won't take long. Uh, like I said, I've been working the entire summer. You know, I didn't take pretty, pretty much no time off. I mean, my kids stay here in school, so I was able to stay in Boston. You know, rehab my knee a little bit better and uh, get myself in better shape. So, I, you know, me being off for we say maybe two and a half weeks, three weeks, as far as this basketball, I don't think it'll set me back too far. How's the knee? The knee is fine. The knee is it's something else, but the knee is fine. Danny, how important is it not to put too much on Marcus because of the injury right away? <laughs> well, you know, Mar Marcus being a rookie, and um, it's very important not to, you know, feel like he has to fill Rondo's shoes. Um, we'll do that as a team, and we'll do that collectively. I know that um, Evan will probably play some point guard, and you can, those are questions you can ask Brad when he gets here. But um, well, Phil can play. But yeah. We'll, we certainly won't have those expectations, and we and we expect Marcus to play both the one and the two this year. Rajon, aside from the injury, what's your mindset coming into this year? What's your mindset? My mindset was, you know, what Danny's been telling me all summer, just to be in the best shape of my life, and uh, I go out there and contribute every night and be the leader of this team. Uh, well, I, you know, coming off of ACL last year, I didn't get to play a full season. Um, you know, a lot of people are doubting me and doubting this team, and you know I've always enjoyed being an underdog. So, uh, you know, people, what people say it really doesn't matter to me. I have a lot of expectations for myself. I'm pretty sure I'm the hardest critic of myself, so uh, I'll go out there and do what I do best and play the game. Rajan, it seems like every year you improve one skill, one skill set. You know that may have been a weakness, and you make it a strength. What are you looking forward to showing off this year? My conditioner. How about spot up shooting, something like that? Well, you already had a question, I should have just asked that question. Oh, I had a follow up. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I've been working a lot on my shooting. Um, each year in the league, I've, I think I've continued to grow as a player, shooting the ball. Um, you know, this team, this role will be different for me this year. Um, we don't have a lot of knockdown shooting on this team, so uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have to take the shot a lot more this year. Do you think that you and Smart can be on the court together uh, as a duo on the perimeter? Who sent you that question? Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Marcus and I will, will play um, a lot together this year, um, along with Avery Bradley, Evan Turner. So, Coach will mix up the combinations. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to just going out there and doing my part, uh, being the leader out there on the floor and contributing every night. Russell, you've been involved in like years. What do you expect going to Trade rooms? Yeah, just the well, photos about your future. I think each year, you know, my name gets bigger and bigger in trade rooms. So, uh, you know, Danny keeps a pretty good communication line open with me as far as everything that's going on. Uh, you know, the reports may come out here and there, but uh, I'm pretty focused on just living my life during the summer. You know, I watch pretty much any TV at all. Uh, you know, I haven't talked to you guys in a while. So, uh, the reports come out as long as Danny's talking to me. You know, he picks up his phone all the time. And he's straightforward with me, so it, I'm fine with the rumors. You know, they've been something my entire career. Uh, and maybe something I negotiate, you know, no trade clause or something like that to keep it out of my name out the trade rumors. But, but you know, this is part of it. You know, no big deal. It's not. It's not only me that's in the trade rumors, but you know, I am in it every year, and this is part of it. Well, John, do you want to stay in Boston beyond this year? Yes. The fans, the people here make me want to stay. You know, the, um, the organization has been great. You know, I can't say enough about, you know, Danny and Wick, but, um, you know, when I walk down the street, you know, the, the fans are embracing, you know, from day one, even when we won a championship, you know, people don't just appreciate, um, you know, us winning. It's, it's more of a thank you. And, you know, it's a love for the game. You know, these people here know the game. You can't fool them. Uh, you know, they know when you're BSing them around and, and you know, you're not playing as hard as you can. So. Uh, the love I get is kind of overwhelming here in Boston, and uh, you know, I would not want to stay here. Rajan, do you have more patience now, you think, at this point in your career to know that this team is sort of rebuilding and, and trying to get back to where it was a couple of years ago? Does that make you want to stay? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I know this isn't a championship team, um, you know, but we're going to go out there every night and fight hard. Um, I think if we continue to do the little things and, and believe in each other and believe in Brad Stevens, uh, we'll, we'll uh, you know, surprise a lot of people. You know, Danny's, you know, I have a complete trust in Danny. Uh, the year we had the worst year, you know, year of my career, uh, you know, in two months we turned it around. So uh, I'm not worried about, you know, what he's able or capable of doing. He's done it. Uh, 
Well, I, I just want to play basketball first. You know, it's, it's a long season. Uh, obviously, with this this injury, I'm, I'm just anxious to get back out there on the court. Um, you know, show what I can do uh, and, and win games. You know, play with my teammates and have fun and go out there playing and do what I love doing best, just playing basketball. You know, everything else will come. You know, I believe. You know, what happens will happen. Uh, everything happens for a reason, and you know what other guys do is what other guys do. You know, and during negotiation time, that'll come up. But right now. Uh, I can't. I can't jump to July one already. You know, I gotta. I gotta live in the moment and take care of what I need to take care of. As far as starting this training camp off right, you know, being on the sideline, encouraging these young guys, and and help lead them from that way, that standpoint. Rajon, do you have to play differently on Coach Stevens' system? Yes, I do. Can you describe how that is different? Free. Free to do what? Whatever I want to do. He always, he's always, he's a big guy in believing in, in going to the next play, you know, the next shot, the next play. Uh, you know, he's the most positive coach I've ever played for. And, you know, when you're playing for a guy that's always smiling, always positive, you can do nothing but be happy. So, uh, you know, we talk a lot. You know, he's actually the guy I call to work out with. So, you know, it's kind of unusual for a head coach to be the guy that you work out with. But uh, I guess he's trying to test and see how much shape I'm in. But he has, he has a pretty good workouts. <laughs> Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, he's a good hard-nosed kid. You know, we played a lot of pickup uh, games um, this summer. Uh, not many, but he played extremely hard. You know, he does the intangibles. You know, if you watch him from the sidelines, you know, you may not know exactly what he does or brings on the court, but when you play with him. Uh, he's a really strong defender, you know, trying to go past him a lot. You know, people hear that, but when you actually play against it, it's different. Uh, he can rebound the ball. He never gives up on a play. You know, he's chasing down block shots. Uh, he's very athletic, and he plays hard. Rajon, what, what kind of things are you doing now? Uh, I know you got the injury, but with your opposite hand, and just staying busy basketball-wise, what kind of things do you do right now? Well, I haven't done anything right now. Uh, you know, all I can do is rest right now. Um, they don't, I can't sweat, you know, the first, the next couple of days, so... I'll just be doing a lot of watching. A lot of watching. What's up, Steve? Oh, you got no questions today? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you look stuck. That's it. That's good. Good job. Thank you. Wait till training camp before I would even answer that question. I'm, I'm going to see what the players feel about the team and what our coaches feel, but I really don't know. I want to. I think that uh, this team could surprise people and be better than a lot of a lot of you that might uh, project on them. And but I'm not sure of that yet. I, I don't know how it's going to how it's going to come together. What would be the key, Danny, to this team surprising in your estimate? Having not seen the team in training camp going in. What do you think would be the key to surprising people? Well, you know, listen, I think that um, just our young players, you know, taking a step up in their games. Um, and that would include Rajan and Jeff and Avery and Sully and Kelly and Marcus and Evan. I think all those guys are good players. And I, I think that just taking a, uh, being a little bit better, at least two or three of them being better than what we've seen before. They've worked really hard this summer, all of them have. And I'm looking forward to it, but um, you know, you never know how a team, a new team, is going to come together, and uh, I'm anxious to see that. You're not, you're not saying that you're expecting the markets to be one of those shoes. How much can you throw in the markets? Now that's a question you probably should hold on for for Brad. Brad's uh, coaching. I mean, obviously, he won't throw the whole playbook at at Marcus. He'll keep it as simple. <laughs> as a rookie needs to keep it simple. Um, or Rondo's well advanced in his experience and um, you know, be like Peyton Manning, you know, versus a rookie quarterback. I mean you just you can't do it. You can't throw the same expectations at him. So I'm sure that Brad will keep it simple. But would you say that this is a pretty good opportunity for Marcus? I would say this is a good opportunity for Marcus, Evan, Avery and Phil. Yeah, all of those guys get some opportunities to play minutes at the point, I think. 
Danny, was there any skepticism at all when Rondo told you the shower story slipped? I mean, you don't hear that kind of injury happening to professional athletes every day. You know, the first thing that, that came to my mind was, um, my wife will kill me for telling you this, but remember when Bob Stanley took out the trash and he sliced his fingers on his pitching hand? Um, and I got out of taking out the trash for quite a few years for that one. <laughs> and then I think Jimmy Key broke his ankle changing the light bulb. Uh, pitcher for the Blue Jays. Um, but make the story even more unique was this summer I was in Vegas. And I was staying at the Wynn Hotel. And I came out of the shower and slipped. And smashed my head. Had to go to the emergency room and get my head glued. Um, spent the night in the emergency room. But... So I guess it's not so shocking to me that that's possible. I mean, uh, talking to the, the medical staff and so forth, it's, a, it's an injury that, is, that happens when you land. It's not like a hitting injury or a, you know, hitting a wall injury or something like that. It's an injury that usually happens in the third metatarsal. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't certain that it was exactly what happened. And I went to visit with Rondo uh, at his home the other day and I, and I have no reason to not believe Rajan. I mean, I've been with him now for eight years, and he's never uh, lied to me that I'm aware of. And uh, I have no reason to not believe him. Is the team going to continue looking into what happened, or is... No, we're not investigators. <laughs> you forgot about Parrish turning his back to uh, shovel his driveway. Robert Parrish did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't shovel my driveway <laughs> when I was playing. Um, so that's a good question that probably everybody should know the answer to that. We've tried to sign Rajan a couple of times, but it doesn't make sense for Rajan to sign. If you know the collective bargaining agreement, it makes no financial sense to, for him to resign. So it was something we'd like to do, but under the current negotiations, it's very unrealistic to even be able to do that. He considers himself a max guy, Danny, do you? Um, I think that a four-time All-Star, by the time he's 27 years old, would qualify for max based on what we've seen in the marketplace. If I were Rajan and I was Rajan's agent, I would definitely say that. But since I'm negotiating against him, I'll withhold. <laughs> <laughs> what does Rajan's injury do to your uh, thoughts about the team going forward? Nothing, nothing going forward. Um, it's just, you know, we're, I was really excited. He's really been working hard. I've seen him and Brad in the gym this last month often uh, working. He's in great shape, like he said. Uh, it's, been, it's been his focus this summer is to get himself in great shape. And um, I thought that, you know, Rajan was really motivated. A lot of people will think he's motivated because he's a free agent. And I don't think that's what drives Rajan. I think that he was motivated because, you know, he didn't play very well last year to his standards coming off the knee injury and um, you know he doesn't like to not be good he doesn't like not being considered one of the best point guards in the game so I think that's what drives him and that's what motivates him and um, that's what drove him to hard work this summer. What stands out or impresses you the most about Well, I think it's just unique. Like Rajan said, you know, not very many head coaches are out on the court with the players one-on-one, -on -one, working with things. I mean, Brad has relentless energy. He's a, he's a very young coach, um, knows the game. He knows exactly what he wants, how he sees Rajan playing. Uh, they've watched film together to show him how he wants Rajan to play. Uh, and I think they have a really good relationship that's really uh, developed this offseason. <coughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Danny. Thank you.